to Single to Soulmate Podcast. Where we help you, the love warrior or love warrior to be, to go from single to with your soulmate, living the life of your dreams. Hi there. This is Laura Fernandez, and I'm coming at you live from my little office in Benicia, California. I'm just getting myself set up. Um, I'm going to be talking about, yeah, you're right, that sense that it's harder to find love these days, it actually is correct, and I'll explain why. All right, and I wanted to talk about this because this subject, because uh, I, I talk to a lot of women from all over the world uh, every day. I talk to a lot of different women, um, and over the past almost 15 years of coaching and mentoring to help women, amazing career women, single women find their soulmate, I've noticed something. Um, and Johnny and I have done a lot of research around this subject. And what we're seeing is that there is an epidemic of loneliness uh, that's happening in most westernized countries. Um, and this is painful, this is a painful truth, but what I know about the truth is that unless we can get to the truth and get real about things, then there's no opportunity for something to change. So uh, it's kind of a harsh truth, but it is the truth. Uh, and this is not just me making up an opinion, this is what the studies bear out, this is what the research is showing. If you uh, did a Google search for epidemic of loneliness, you would just be get millions of hits um, from all over the world. So, in, and what the studies are saying is, and I'm going to speak to Americans here. I know there are some of you here in the group who are not American, but it does apply to um, to uh, most Westernized countries. So, uh, almost half of Americans self-identify as lonely. Almost half. And what the studies are also showing is that Americans have been getting married and having children later than in life over the past uh, 30 to 40 years. Like they have um, started to, women have been, been getting married later, um, putting off having kids later uh, for the past 30 or 40 years. And there are now at this point more single people in the U.S. than at any time in the past 140 years more single people. And the thing is, the majority of those single people don't really want to be single. They don't want to be single. So, and there's a lot of reasons why, like, I, I can't, like, fix the society's woes that would create a whole scenario where most people are lonely. That's not something that, you know, I have a, I have, I'm sure I've, I've got some opinions on, but what I know about the results of this epidemic of loneliness, because I talk to women every day, and these are badass women. These are women who are going for their dreams. They are doing their masters. They're going high level, you know, um, education. Um, they are moving up in the company. They are starting their own businesses. Um, they are, you know, these are the nurses, these are the teachers, these are the doctors, the lawyers, the psychologists, the um, therapists. I mean, just you name it. Like these are amazing women by every every respect, and yet they come home after a long day of work to the cold, empty apartments, and that feeling of I'm so tired, and I have to, you know, make dinner, get the laundry done clean the house, and I've just worked a nine-hour, 10-hour day, or maybe an eight-hour day, but the commute, what I call your extra job, is an hour each way. So you can just add, you know, 10 hours a week to your amount of work that you're doing. So coming home is, I mean, I just remember very clearly coming home after a long day of work and tired and really wanting my soulmate to be there. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I wanted my soulmate to be there and be like, honey, come on in. I've made dinner, have a seat here, here's a glass of wine, um, tell me about your day, I know it's been a rough day. Like that was something that I was dreaming of and I remember that feeling of loneliness, that ache. So um, what happens is, is that we women, we are badasses in our career, we're going for our dreams in our careers, our health, our fitness level, we're doing amazing travel adventures nowadays, all over the world, which is so awesome. But we get stressed out carrying the burdens of life all on our own. Do you know what I'm saying here? If you are listening to this now and you know what I'm talking about, 
click the like or click the something to let me know you're not what I'm talking about. So even if you're not listening right now live, but you're listening later, I'd love to, to hear your thoughts on that. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where all the burdens of life, all the stresses, it's just on your shoulders. And doesn't that wear you out after a while? And so what happens is we start a, what starts with that, like kind of just getting stressed, all this, the, 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 the pressure on us is we get more and more kind of traumatized. And that's a little bit of a dramatic word, but I'm going to use that for lack of a better word at this moment. We get more traumatized. We get more gun shy as we date. Do you know what I'm talking about? As you get out there and you're dating and it can create a negative spiral down. Like after the next guy ghosts you or the other guy, um, it turns out to be some sort of narcissistic control freak or some other guy was emotionally unavailable. And what happens is you start to, it starts to create a, a sense within you that there's, there's just no hope. Like there's, and you start to actually, and I want to know if you've ever felt this way, like going, I wonder if there's something wrong with me. Like, I wonder if it's me, like, is there something broken inside of me, damaged, or is there something? Is there something that I'm saying, or some way that I'm being, that is causing me to keep attracting the wrong guy for me? Whether he's a narcissist, whether he's a you know a wimpy guy, whether he's just like not available, whether he's emotionally unavailable, whether he's physically unavailable or abusive, you know, you start to ask after a while, like. I, I wonder if it's, if it's me. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, so if that's ever been you, like, I definitely want you to please, I'm inviting you to, you know, do a like or a something <laughs> there. Let me know about that. You know, like, I know that it can get tiring. Maybe you've experienced this where you see your girlfriends getting married, having babies, moving on with their lives. And you get kind of tired of being the third wheel, going out with the couples in your life. Or maybe even worse, you have a group of single women who are wonderful women, but you're kind of tired of hanging out with them most of the time. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not all glamorous like Sex in the City. Um, you know, watching the Sex in the City reruns kind of reminds you, like, that's not exactly as... It's not as glamorous as that. Um, maybe you get kind of... You love your girlfriends, your single girlfriends, but you're kind of like... I'm ready to find my man, um, but you start to lose that confidence. Um, and you're losing that confidence that's really, it's actually needed. It's needed for you to be able to bust past your loneliness, bust past your whatever hopelessness you may be feeling, whatever doubts you may be feeling that it's even possible for you. But that confidence is spiraling down. And many of you have to force yourselves to even get out there, to, to date online. Many of you are burnt out on dating online. You're just wiped out. You just like the thought of it just drains your energy. There's so many women who feel that way. Um, and, um, or it gets tiring. I remember this, it gets tiring to be out in the world and like wondering, you know, I wonder if that could be my guy. Ooh, you know, you know that feeling like we're just kind of like on the lookout, you know, where is he? Ooh, I wonder if he's, he just smiled at me. I wonder if he could be it, right? Um, and again, the, after another guy breaks up with you or after you break up with another guy, just knowing that he wasn't the right guy, or maybe you've been married and been divorced and now you're, you know, maybe you're a single mom, you know, but whatever it is, you start, the years go by because we're here facing a new decade and you're single still and you've been trying. It's not like you haven't been trying. You've been getting out there. Or maybe you haven't. Maybe you're just like too afraid you don't even know what to do to get out there in a healthy way that's safe and that's, um, you know, make it's a pleasurable experience. So, yeah, you are right. If you've ever felt that like, gosh, I, this is harder than it was for my grandparents to find love. You're right. It is true. But the, the thing is, is that what most people most women are being taught to do when they get out there or for finding their soulmate is that just get online. It's a numbers game. That's all you really need to do. You need to just get online and, and, and date a lot of guys and kiss a lot of frogs. And, and then eventually 
you'll find your life. That's all it takes. And I really wish it was that easy, ladies. It's not. You know it, right? Some of you have been single for a year. Some of you have been single for five years, maybe a decade. Maybe you're looking at like, gosh, it's 2020. Last time I was in a relationship was 10 years ago. And you're, and you're not, you haven't been even looking for just another relationship that ends in a breakup, right? You're actually looking for your husband. So it just, again, there's that spiraling down of confidence. And it's, so what we have found is that it's very important that you do something different than what most women are doing. Most single women are going about getting out there in a completely, um, well, not effective way. Okay, judging by the numbers that we're seeing. Okay, so what to, what to do instead? Well, what most women do is they just get online with no knowing how to do it, uh, no how to, no knowing how to craft a, a, a healthy um, and radiant profile that's magnetizing to good men. Most women um, just uh, they think it's about dating tips. Like if I just know how to flirt. That'll, that, that's all I need to do is I just need to know how to flirt with a guy. Um, and uh, what other women do is they think that it's just about getting out there, going out with their girlfriends, signing up for yet a, another meetup um, a, event. And what a, a lot of women also do is that they, um, they think, well, it's personal development. It's personal growth. That's what I need. And that's, they're on the right track when they think that. Because they know that there's something within that needs to shift and change. But the problem is what most women do is they do a general approach to personal development. Not a focused, focused and intense and kind of like, you know, both feet in, you know, 100% kind of commitment to personal growth, to, to becoming their own soulmate first, to, to growing themselves in mind, body, spirit, soul in every aspect and having them use that, their personal growth journey, as the journey to their soulmate. So most women do not do that. Most women just think it's an, ex they just take an external approach. And it's not because they're bad women. It's not because you're not amazing in so many ways. It's just that's what conventional wisdom would tell you you have to do. And it's worked for just enough people in your life that kind of just like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Non-focused, kind of dabbling approach. That can work for some people. But if you've been trying to find your soulmate for a long time now, for more than a year, and it hasn't happened, and you haven't met and married, there's some work to be done. There's some internal shifting to be done. And so that's why it's so crucial for, for you to do something that's different than most single women are doing. Most single women... They, they don't even know that there are such a things as love mentors. And if they do find out, what they do is they tend to hire a, a love mentor who's just a woman or just a man, one or the other, not both together. Uh, so they can get a balanced approach, a balanced viewpoint on attracting their soulmate. Most women, what they do is they... Um, They'll even hire, they will hire help like a love mentor, but the love mentor is single herself or single himself. And so, and that's like, so they haven't actually, they can't actually really teach you to do what they simply cannot do. Um, most women, uh, if they are looking for a love mentor, they don't know that they need to be actually looking for a love coach, a love mentor who's been doing it for more than 10 years, more than a decade, because all the studies say, Malcolm Gladwell, the author writes, the, the research shows that you need to have 10 years and or 10,000 hours of work in a particular specific niche, specific area to gain mastery. So what a lot of women do who are open to love coaching, love mentoring, is they hire somebody who's just been doing it for a year or two, and it's not, even, it's not even in a relationship themselves. And so they're spinning their wheels and they're wondering why they're not moving forward in their lives. Um, so you're right, it is harder than ever to, to find love. And I wanna encourage you and let you know that there's a different way, and there's a different approach. And I have, um, I'm giving you an opportunity um, if you are a single woman, a single career woman between the ages of 27, 28, um, and 50, haven't worked with us before and you want to find out you want to have like kind of a breakthrough in like what's going on for yourself like you want to 
you want to find out what's going on, I'm inviting you to get on the phone. Yeah, let's get on the phone. Let's talk about like what's not working in your love life, what you're really going for. Um, and what I'm going to encourage you to do is that if only do this if this is a priority for you. Let's get on the phone. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about what's going on, what's in unique and, and um, uh, that's happening in your situation and see what we can do to help you get a breakthrough. Thank you for joining me. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. If you're a single professional woman who wants your success in your love life to match your success in your career or business, and you're looking to get crystal clear right now about why true love just hasn't been knocking on your door and, and what you can do about it, you're going to want to book a Love Breakthrough Clarity Call right now with one of our Love Breakthrough Specialists. She'll get on the phone or Zoom call with you one-on-one -on -one to assess exactly what's been holding you back in love, what it is you really want, and how to get there as quickly as possible. By the end of this compassionate and professional assessment, you'll finally have clarity, plus an immediately actionable path forward. So just go to singletosoulmate.com forward slash call to book a call. That's singletosoulmate.com forward slash call for a free love breakthrough call. That's for you if you're a single professional woman who is as serious about your love life right now as you've been about getting your degree or your career or business success. And if you're ready to finally have some clarity and have a breakthrough in your love life right now, this is perfect for you. Okay? Again, that's single to soulmate.com forward slash call to book your life-changing one-on-one assessment call right away.